Correct. So that sniper team that was in the AGR building, they're the first ones that went up on the roof. Uh, they, they were the first to encounter the, the dead assassin at that point in time. Uh, later on, other people joined them and, you know, somebody told them to send the pictures they had taken to an ATF agent, which I think is very strange. And we, we called up that ATF agent. Uh, that, that individual uh, said that he was with ATF and now he's gone dark. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for watching. So we're now seven days out from a former president getting shot in the face, almost being killed on national TV, and still nobody's resigned and we still know next to nothing about the shooter. And then on top of that, now we have Senator Ron Johnson getting on Fox News and saying that he believes, one, that there was a second shooter, and two, that the FBI is stonewalling, and for some reason, the ATF is involved in this now. Now, on top of all the other supposed incompetence by the Secret Service, we find out from Ron Johnson that the Secret Service did not attend a security meeting the morning of this rally. And they were apparently all on different security channels, so any messages had to be relayed between the different agencies. It was a setup. And just to make everything even more conspiratorial, we find out that the Secret Service were told to send pictures of the shooter to some shadowy ATF agent. And apparently they found out who this ATF agent is, but then after Ron Johnson contacted him, he's now gone dark. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, if he's just disappeared or if he's not answering phone calls or emails anymore, but apparently now all these agencies are really dragging their feet with answers. So let's check out this interview with Ron Johnson and then I'll give my thoughts afterwards. Uh, my staff immediately started reaching out to local law enforcement. Uh, we've gathered a fair amount of information. Again, we're just scratching the surface. But you know, a couple, couple of things that we found out, for example, the Secret Service did not even attend the 9 o'clock security meeting with local law enforcement. Uh, pretty well put in charge the Butler County uh, law enforcement to, to coordinate things. Uh, law enforcement wasn't even on the same channel. So, uh, so the, that the was, SWAT that was just, to be, clear, just to be clear, Senator, that was a 9 a.m. meeting on July 13th, the day of the shooting. Correct. Secret Correct. Service yeah, wasn't Service there. Secret Service there for site visits, weren't even there. You know, kind of turned over some of the, the outer perimeter stuff to local law enforcement. Uh, they weren't even on the same security channel. So the sniper and SWAT teams weren't on the same channel as the patrol officers, and they weren't on the same channel uh, as Secret Service. So they had to relay things. Uh, you know, one of the things we found out is that, uh, you know, we've got a more detailed timeline. Uh, this picture is now on the internet, but a picture was, t photo was taken by the, the local sniper team in the AGR building at 514 of Crooks. Uh, so again, we had pictures of this guy. You know, why, why was he intercepted? There's so, so, so many, clear, so many the, the unanswered pictures, questions here. The pictures were taken at 514 and he was shot at 611. Correct. Okay. C and continue. again, we've got a more deep. So, so I'm going to be issuing a preliminary report. It's again, it's preliminary. It's just scratching the surface. We're primarily going to release that report to solicit more eyewitness testimony. If you took video, save it. You know, make a backup copy. Copy. You know, we can glean things in terms of audio and in terms of you know where the shots came from. You know, was it one rifle? Was it more than one? Uh, I, I've seen some pretty interesting uh, video on the internet by experts that uh, certainly calls into question what the FBI is telling us about a single shooter. Again, we're only just beginning this, but it is so important that people who saw things that have information, they preserve it, they memorialize what they're what they saw because memories change over time. They can be influenced. So it's again, it's good news on a bipartisan basis. Chairman Blumenthal and I are dedicated to taking transcribed interviews with law enforcement and public, the just members of the general public that were at that rally. Uh, no matter how insignificant your piece of information might be, it might you know, lend to provide the full story of what happened because the American public needs to understand what happened here. So I, I know that, well, I tweeted out yesterday the fact that you're doing this uh, bipartisan investigation and I put on your email, you have, a, you have an email that you want people to, to send information to and I know that you'll, you'll treat that later. But I, but I got to get to this. Um, after the shooter was taken down by Secret Service, the local uh, law enforcement, and I know this from some of your preliminary comments, your preliminary findings, started taking pictures of the dead body, right? Can you tell us what happened then? 
Correct. So that sniper team that was in the AGR building, they're the first ones that went up on the roof. Uh, they, they were the first to encounter the, the dead uh, assassin at that point in time. Uh, later on, other people joined them, and you know somebody told them to send the pictures they had taken to an ATF agent, which I think is very strange. And we, we called up that ATF agent, uh, that, that individual... Uh, it said that he was with ATF, and now he's gone dark. We've also reached out to the Secret Service agents in charge on the ground. Uh, all we're getting there is the runaround. So we are getting information from local law enforcement, and we appreciate that. But unfortunately, federal law enforcement agents, they're just saying, well, go through your congressional liaison. Again, that's going to be unacceptable. Uh, I'm, I wish I could rely and, and have faith in the FBI and the Secret Service to do a, a truthful accounting of this. But that's not been my experience with the Russian collusion hoax and for years deal with federal law enforcement. We need completely separate and independent investigations, and it has to start now. So, so are you questioning whether or not there was a second shooter? Is that what you're questioning? Or, or, or if the shooter had a different gun? Uh, you know, I saw an extremely convincing video online. I know it's all over the place. So Ron Johnson was talking about a second shooter, and I think I know what he's talking about because I've been seeing these videos on YouTube and Twitter of the water tower and a supposed shooter on top of it. What happened? told them if you uh, want to really see something that said take a look what happened thing that said take a look what happened thing that said take a look what happened thing that said take a look what happened We got breaking news. Sharp shooter shot to the left. He killed the gentleman in the water tower here. Shot fired towards the uh, blue water tank. Blue water tank. That's fine. Now, I don't know if this is an actual shooter on the water tower or if it's just video artifacts because it's kind of far off from where the camera point is and all the way zoomed in, you get all those kind of blocky graphics and it could just be the shadows distorting. I don't know. What do you all think? Is it a shooter or probably video artifacts? Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, there were three distinct shots early on, followed by another five in more staccato, more rapidly fired, and then the final one, which we believe took the shooter out. How do you explain that? I don't know. I'm not an expert. Uh, but the individual putting that video out says it clearly shows that there are at least three different weapons fired that day. Again, I don't know, but we can't trust the FBI and the Secret Service to do a an honest and open and transparent investigation. That's just a very sad fact. So we, we've got we've got to rely on on other sources independent to really find out what the truth of the matter was on Saturday, July 13th. So, so let me go back to what happened after the guy, the shooter is dead. You just mentioned somebody goes up. So this is the guy in the suit who walks up the ladder, goes to the roof, and tells the local, the locals, send those pictures to this cell phone. Who was that person? Well, again, I'm not sure that was the guy. I, I think another county law enforcement gave the the uh, number to the other county law enforcement, the snipers, to to send the the 
text. Uh, some guy in a suit walks up the ladder. Uh, they believe you Secret Service. I'm not sure they gave cr credentials, but that's part of the, Again, Maria, this is so preliminary. I'm issuing this. I'm providing this information, a much more detailed timeline to prompt others to come forward. We, we need to complete this picture. We have a lot of puzzle pieces to fill in here. Is it is it odd to you that the locals were being told to send the pictures to the Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms Agency, ATF? Where does ATF yeah, come it's in? Very, it's very, it's, the, the, the oddity starts with the fact that uh, local law enforcement were just tasked with securing the perimeter, uh, told to go cover that AGR building, not really told where it is set up, so they set up on the second floor. They went to that AGR building at 1030 in the morning. So they were stationed there well, well in advance. You know, they, no, they noticed this suspicious character at 510. They took a photo of him at 514. The, the president was shot at 611. You know, so again, an hour has passed. You know, again, they, don't communic they didn't have communication, uh, same channels with their law enforcement patrol officers. They weren't in communication with the Secret Service other than going through the Butler County uh, communication center. So again, it, it's, it's everything you would assume about Secret Service protection of a former president was not true. It didn't happen. It's just baffling to me. It should baffle the American public. That's why we need to find the answers and find out what actually happened here. It is just so wild to me that now seven days out from this attempted assassination of a former president who's currently running and in the lead, that there's such a muted response from our media. I mean, I guess we should expect it, but they just continued on with their insane rhetoric about how Donald Trump is literally a dictator and he's going to take over the country and get rid of the Constitution and there's not going to be a country or elections anymore. If there's any other nutcases out there who are willing to go after Donald Trump, you can guarantee that they're going to feel even more confident to do so now because the media has just continued on with this rhetoric. And the fact is, if you actually believe that that's the case, well, then it's almost your American duty to do something. But of course, it's all just a bunch of crap that they're saying because they're desperate to retain power. And this far left ideology that's captured the Democrat Party has convinced themselves that they are justified to take literally any action. The fact is, if this had happened to Biden, we would have wall to wall propaganda, the likes of which you haven't seen before. It'd be very similar to what we've seen over the years after the January 6th riot. Look how they've not let that go. Can you imagine if some MAGA or Trump person took a shot at Joe Biden? Not only would they go after Donald Trump and he'd probably actually be put away for good this time, but they would come after Fox News, people like me, anybody who says anything bad about Joe Biden. I mean, remember back when the Let's Go Brandon and F Joe Biden stuff started really ramping up and the media was saying that that was dangerous. I don't know, what do you all think? Let me know in the comments and if you're still here, might as well hit that like button and subscribe. I do post on a regular basis, although I will say that this summer it's been really hard to stay consistent on a daily basis just because I have all four kids home for the summer and it's pretty crazy every day with sports and everything else. So the fall is coming and I really hope to get back on a daily schedule once that happens, but make sure to keep checking back for more. Thanks a lot.